Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. In this video, I do a detailed analysis of the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser cartridge. While they are more likely to be familiar with the 375 Holland and Holland Magnum, most hunters in North America probably haven't heard of the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser. That's really a shame because the 9.3 is an excellent cartridge that also has some important advantages over the 375. Indeed, the 9.3 by 62 was one of the very first medium bore smokeless rifle cartridges designed for use in a bolt action rifle. That cartridge took the hunting world by storm and was incredibly popular among German settlers in Africa at the beginning of the 20th century. The success of the 9.3 also helped spur the development of some other more well-known cartridges like the 375 and the 416 Rigby. Now, due in part to the fact that it has superior ballistics on paper, the 375 has indeed surpassed the 9.3 by 62 in popularity among North American and British hunters. However, the 9.3 by 62 is still widely used in continental Europe and in Africa. Those hunters are onto something because just comparing the paper ballistics of the 9.3 and the 375 doesn't tell the whole story, and the 9.3 by 62 is still a very highly regarded cartridge among hunters for a number of reasons. So on this episode, I do a detailed analysis of the 9.3, and I explain why it is such an effective rifle cartridge for hunting big game all over the world, and why you should consider hunting with it. Now before we get started, make sure you are on my email list. To do that, click that link below the video or just go to huntingguns101.com and sign up there to get my free ebook on the best hunting cartridges. In addition to that ebook, you will also start to receive the emails I send out every weekday. Those are entertaining and informative emails about hunting, shooting, ballistics, etc. I get feedback all the time from people telling me how much they enjoy receiving them and how much they look forward to hearing from me every day. So make sure you are getting them too by going to huntingguns101.com and signing up there. Additionally, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Once again, just hit that red subscribe button below the video to make sure you automatically get all of my future videos on cartridge profiles, cartridge comparisons, gear reviews, things like that. So hit that red subscribe button, sign up at huntingguns101.com, and now let's get started talking about the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser. The hunting and shooting worlds changed forever in 1905 with the introduction of the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser cartridge. Designed by Otto Bach, the cartridge incorporated two major advances in firearm technology in the early 20th century. The introduction of smokeless powder, and the Mauser 98 rifle. Remember, this was several years before the 375 H&H came along in 1912. Now, prior to the development of smokeless powder and the Mauser 98, hunters primarily used single-shot or double-barreled black powder firearms. Since black powder firearms have a relatively low velocity limit, by modern standards anyway, hunters pursuing dangerous game tended to use large-bore rifles firing very heavy bullets. Indeed, for this reason, elephant hunters of the day, like the legendary Frederick Courtney Salou, used massive four, six, or eight bore rifles firing bullets as large as one inch in diameter and weighing as much as 1,750 grains, or four ounces. These rifles produced an incredible amount of smoke, and even though they were also extremely heavy, they had immense recoil. Salou, and I think it was him, said that he suffered permanent nerve damage to his shoulder and arm that he suffered through later in life from the punishing recoil of that big bore rifle. At the same time, those massive, slow-moving lead bullets did not penetrate very well, and the rifles took a really long time to reload. So as you can imagine, taking into account the stuff that they were using at the time, big game hunters jumped at the chance to use a newer and more advanced cartridge. Using smokeless powder as a propellant, the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser was capable of achieving much higher velocities than the big bore black powder cartridges of the day. Those significantly higher velocities enabled the use of smaller diameter jacketed bullets. This in turn resulted in the use of bullets with significantly higher sectional densities, 
which correspondingly penetrated much more reliably than the old big bore lead bullets. In addition to the incredible improvement in performance of the 9.3 by 62 offered compared to previous cartridges, Bach went a step further and he designed the cartridge to operate in the revolutionary new bolt-action Mauser 98 rifle. Now, a hunter equipped with a Mauser rifle could fire as many as five or maybe even six shots before emptying the magazine. And remember, this is compared to just one or two with earlier rifles. So not only was the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser a dramatic improvement over those more common big game hunting cartridges prior to that point, but it also could be used as an inexpensive and reliable rifle that more than doubled the number of shots a hunter could fire before reloading. And oh, by the way, it was also a lot lighter and easier to carry, but didn't recoil nearly as much either. So not surprisingly, hunters quickly embraced the 9.3 by 62. The 9.3 by 62 was an especially big hit among German settlers in Africa, where it acquired a reputation for effectiveness on thick-skinned, dangerous game like Cape Buffalo and Elephant. At the same time, the cartridge had very manageable recoil and was also a good choice for the whole range of planes game hunting as well. And so not surprisingly, it became a favorite among hunters who wanted a versatile hunting cartridge that offered excellent all-around performance. Okay, so what are the ballistics of the 9.3 like? Well, a classic 9.3 by 62 millimeter factory load fires a .366 caliber, 286 grain bullet at 2,350 feet per second for just over 3,500 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. That is probably the single most popular 9.3 by 62 load. But you can also find other factory loads for the cartridge, firing bullets as light as 220 grains and as heavy as 320 grains at muzzle velocities between 2,200 and 2,700 feet per second. Now, the 9.3 by 62 is most often compared to the 375 H and H Magnum, though. That classic 9.3 load of a 286 grain bullet at 2,350 feet per second certainly does appear to pale in comparison to a typical 375 H and H load of a 300 grain bullet at 2,550 feet per second, which is generating about 4,300 foot pounds of energy. Now, while the 375 is indeed an outstanding cartridge, the 9.3 by 62 delivers 80 to 95% of the power, depending on the exact load we're talking about here, with less recoil and with the added bonus of being able to fit in a rifle with a standard length action instead of the magnum length action required by the 375 H&H. Right, that 375 H&H cartridge is quite a bit longer. It has an overall length of 3.6 inches, and it is also the very definition of a quote-unquote belted magnum cartridge. So not only does it require the use of a longer magnum length rifle action, but you also need a magnum bolt face too because it has that 0.532 inch rim diameter. The 9.3 by 62 on the other hand is a much shorter cartridge and will fit in a standard length rifle action, right? Same as a 270, a 30-06, etc. And it also has a smaller rim diameter and I think the base uh, diameter of the cartridge is 0.476 inches which is almost exactly the same as what you would also have in the 30-06, etc. So it is very much the definition of a quote-unquote standard size cartridge, both in the diameter of the case and the length of the uh, cartridge overall and its case. So with those things in mind, it's very interesting how the 9.3 can come so close to duplicating the performance of the 375 H&H, but in just an overall much smaller package. That also means that the rifles chambered in 9.3 are going to be shorter, lighter, and usually cheaper overall than is the case with a 375 H&H rifle. Now, the, like I said earlier, the 9.3 uses .366 caliber bullets, which is a little smaller than the .375 caliber bullets used by the 375. Now, some countries have a .375 caliber minimum bullet diameter required for hunting dangerous game. So in those cases, the 9.3 by 62 is not technically legal for use in those places. Other countries either have no caliber minimum or or have a 9.2 millimeter minimum, like is the case with Zimbabwe. So if you hear people refer to the 9.3 as the quote-unquote minimum legal caliber for elephant or cape buffalo, that's probably what they are referring to. 
Now, in those countries where it is legal to hunt dangerous game wood, though, the 9.3 has an excellent reputation. One of the reasons why the 9.3, and the 7mm Mauser for that matter too, performs so well on large and dangerous game is because it penetrates deeply and consistently. Sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things equal, a heavier projectile of a given caliber will be longer and therefore have a higher sectional density and consequently penetrate deeper than bullets with a lower mass and lower sectional density. A 270 grain .375 caliber bullet has a sectional density of .274 and a 300 grain .375 bullet has a sectional density of .305. Now, the 9.3 with its little bit smaller diameter, 366 caliber bullets, actually has a 0 .305 sectional density with that 286 grain bullet. And if you have a 300 grain uh, bullet in that same diameter, you're going to get a 0 .320 sectional density. Now, since bullet penetration is so important when hunting thick skin dangerous game, that advantage in sectional density is one factor that has very likely contributed to the reputation the cartridge has for being so effective on thick skin dangerous game, specifically Cape Buffalo. The relatively mild recoil of the 9.3 certainly comes into play here as well. When the two loads I just talked about are fired from an 8 pound rifle, that 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser load has less than 75% of the free recoil energy of that 375 load. Many hunters can handle recoil of both cartridges, but the 375 H&H usually represents the upper end of what the typical hunter can deal with. So the 9.3 has a pretty significant edge in this respect. Now for, for comparison, most 9.3 loads only have about 20 to 30% more free recoil energy than a typical rifle chambered in 30 out 6 so let's not underestimate the impact that recoil has on the ability of a person to shoot accurately either. I know this is the internet. Everybody's really tough. We can handle the recoil of a 460 Weatherby, no problem, and shoot one-inch groups with it at the range from the bench. But in the real world, regardless of how well a given person handles recoil, all other things being equal, they're probably going to shoot better with a milder recoiling rifle and cartridge. This can also facilitate better shot placement, especially for hunters who might just have a little bit of trouble with the recoil of the 375. Lighter recoil typically increases the accuracy of that initial shot, as well as enabling the hunter to make a rapid follow-up shot or two or three. As has been said over and over again, where an animal is hit is much more important than what it is hit with. So an accurately placed 9.3 millimeter bullet is much more effective than a poorly placed 375, 416, or 458 caliber bullet. That's all true, not disputing it. And here is a good example of what I mean. Kevin Robertson owned a Bruno ZG47 rifle chambered a 9.3 by 62 that he used as a quote unquote client rifle after he acquired it from an older hunter who previously used that rifle to good effect as a crop protection officer on a large sugarcane estate in the Rhodesian Lowveld. Between that man, Kevin, and all of Kevin's clients over the years, Kevin estimated that rifle had cleanly taken over 650 Cape Buffalo. He said that particular rifle was wonderful to shoot. It was accurate, recoil was surprisingly mild, so even his smaller framed and or more recoil shy hunters didn't have problems with it. Why is this? Well first, the rifle weighed 10 pounds and it fired that 286 grain bullet, like I said, at about that classic 2,350 foot per second range with Kevin's hand loads. With all those things in mind, you run the numbers, it's only generating about 28 foot pounds of recoil. For reference, an 8-pound 30-06 rifle with 180-grain bullets going 2,700 feet per second is generating about 21 foot-pounds of recoil. Right? It's a lighter rifle, but shooting also a lighter recoiling cartridge. When you balance out the much more powerful 9.3 and a little bit heavier rifle, those are the numbers that you come up with. So yeah, it's producing more recoil than the 30-06, but... Even so, you can see the 9.3 is still much closer to the 30-06 in the recoil department and common rifle weights for each cartridge than the 9.3 is to the 375. And for reference, a 375 and a 10-pound rifle thereabouts is going to be giving you about 40 foot-pounds of recoil energy with a typical 375 factory load. 
Now, Kevin talks about this 9.3 millimeter rifle in his book, Africa's Most Dangerous. And on page 100 and 101, he recounts the previous owner of that rifle's parting guidance to him when Kevin bought the rifle. Learn to shoot the Bruno well, especially offhand. Also, get to know a buffalo's internal anatomy intimately from all angles, for if you hit one in exactly the right spot with a good 9.3 bullet, it will not go far. Never take any moving or poorly positioned going away shots, and be sure to get in really close before you pull the trigger. The 375 H&H will often shoot a solid right through one buffalo and then wound another. Be particularly careful to remember this when hunting in thick bush or in herds because it will be the one you have unknowingly wounded which will kill you. With a 9.3, this usually does not happen, and that's why I preferred it to the 375 H&H. Follow this advice, my boy, and this rifle won't let you down. End of quote. That paragraph sums up most of the strengths and weaknesses of the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser very well. First, it's just a stone-cold killer, and it performs much better than you'd think just by looking at its performance on paper. And those 650 buffalo are a pretty good testament to the effectiveness of that cartridge. It's also just a workhorse in the same vein as the venerable old 30-06, which is darn near as old as the 9.3. Neither is glamorous, but both have been putting in the reps for well over a century and are still going strong. Even the legendary John Taylor, who killed elephant and buffalo with darn near every cartridge you can think of, had nothing but nice things to say about the 9.3. But let's be honest here. The 9.3 is adequate for dangerous game. I don't mean that as a slur, but let's not get carried away either. Yes, it will work, and it will work darn well, but remember what that old man said. Get in close, don't take any moving or risky shots, wait for the perfect shot angle, place your shot with care. If you do that, the buff's going to run 50 to 100 yards and die. Those are all sensible precautions, and we'd all be well advised to abide by them regardless of what we're hunting with. But let's also just remember here, your margin of error is just smaller with the 9.3 than is the case with other cartridges like a 500, a 458, a 416, or even a 375. And there are some shots you will be able to ethically and reasonably take with those cartridges that you won't be able to take with a 9.3. It is also most assuredly not a stopping cartridge either. Yes, it will work with perfect shot placement in a pinch, but that's not what it was designed or intended to do. But if we're being honest, neither is the 375 Ruger or the 375 H&H. After all, there's a reason why so many professional hunters use rifles chambered in cartridges like 416 Rigby, 458 Win Mag, 458 Lot, or 470 Nitro to back up clients on dangerous game hunts. All of those cartridges have a significantly larger frontal surface area, more kinetic energy, more momentum, and also shoot bullets with a higher sectional density than the 9.3. For instance, let's go back to that 9.3 load I keep talking about. 286 grain bullet at, at 2,350 feet per second is delivering 3,500 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, momentum value of 96, shoots a bullet, sectional density 0 0.305. A 400 grain loading for a 416 Rigby, which shoots a bullet at the same muzzle velocity, 2,350 feet per second as the 9.3, uses a bullet with about 29% more frontal surface area, is significantly heavier, has about 4,900 foot-pounds of energy, which is about 40% more than the 9.3, a momentum value of 126, which is about 31% more than the 9.3, and it shoots a bullet with a sectional density of 0 0.330. Right, 0 0.305, very good. 330, quite a bit better. The 500 grain loading for a 458 wind mag at 2,150 feet per second uses a bullet that's even heavier, has about 57% more frontal surface area, has about 5,100 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. That's about 40% more than the 9.3. It has a momentum value of 153. That's about 60% more than the 9.3. And it also shoots a bullet with an incredible sectional density of 0.341. All those cartridges have much more recoil, though, like nearly twice as much for the 458. So, you know, for being honest, 416 Rigby, 
458 Win Mag, etc. They're simply not an option for some hunters because they cannot shoot those cartridges effectively. However, all other things being equal, they will produce more visual effect on a buffalo regardless of the shot angle. They are much better options as stopping cartridges, and you got a little bit more room for error with less than ideal shot placement, and you're going to get a little bit more flexibility with shot angles with those cartridges, like I said, of a reasonable shot angle that you can take on a buffalo with them versus the 9.3. Here's a story that illustrates what I mean. There's a guy I know well that hunted buffalo with a 9.3 several years ago. He was using premium quality ammo on this hunt, 286 grain swift A-frame bullets with some high quality solids behind them. Didn't take a very long shot. It was a very uh, conventional shot angle. So really kind of just did everything the way you were supposed to getting up to that point, all within the the boundaries of of what you like to see someone doing really on any buffalo hunt, but especially with something like a 9.3. Unfortunately, he just didn't make a very good shot. He hit the vitals, but it was kind of a marginal vital shot. Just kind of hit right at the edge of the vitals there. If I remember right, the bullet hit too high, and it kind of nicked uh, the shoulder blade on that near side shoulder, and the bullet started to uh, deflect, right? It didn't hit right straight on the shoulder blade, just kind of on the edge of it, and between that and some of the ribs, the bullet started to deflect. And so it hit near the top of the near side lung, but as it deflected, it did not hit the other lung, did not hit the heart, did not hit the liver. So they had this buffalo with a significant but not catastrophic injury to one lung. I think the I think it still made a hole about the size of your thumb in that near side lung, but that was it. And it was, like I said, near the top of that lung. Uh, so it was a serious wound to the buffalo, but he still had a lot of fight left in him, and their tracking job was just a little bit more exciting and long and stressful than they originally anticipated doing. And so everything turned out fine. They killed the buffalo. Nobody got hurt. But as they were doing the postmortem on it, they looked and saw what happened here, recovered that bullet and everything. And really everyone, to include the hunter, looked at it and said, yeah, you know, obviously the best thing would have been here to have made a better shot and this wouldn't have happened. But with identical shot placement that was just a little bit too high, something like that, uh, something more powerful, even a 375, but of course a 416, a 458, whatever, probably would have delivered much better results here and ended up hitting both lungs on this buffalo, probably not deflecting, etc., probably would have run 50, 100 yards and died, and that would have been the end of it. Even, like I said, with that less than ideal shot placement. So yeah, the 9.3 can facilitate good shot placement, which overall, across a large population of hunters and the game they shoot with the cartridge, that is a very big net plus. But it's also just a smaller hammer, and there's no getting around that. So with that in mind, I think the 9.3 by 62 is best suited for someone who wants an effective all-around hunting cartridge as opposed to something they plan on using exclusively for thick-skinned, dangerous game. And I'm specifically referring to stuff like buffalo, hippo, and elephant here. Indeed, typical 9.3 by 62 loads are absolutely deadly on medium and large game animals like white-tailed deer, wild boar, elk, caribou, black bear, It'll also work really darn well on stuff like brown bear, grizzly bear, and moose in Alaska and Canada. The same thing goes for most species of African plains game, right? Impala, kudu, wildebeest, waterbuck, zebra, gemsbok, even the massive eland. And the same is also true for animals that you might encounter elsewhere, right? Uh, Fallow deer, rusa deer, sika deer, sambar deer, red stag. The 9.3 is actually surprisingly popular in Australia among those that hunt sambar deer. Those deer are known for being especially big and pretty darn tough. They live in areas where you don't necessarily have very good visibility and you can't I always get a good shot angle on an animal and you often won't get a good follow-up shot on it because it's so thick. So guys look for something that is both shootable and powerful, like the 9.3 by 62. And like I said, it's very popular and effective for that style of hunting. And so, yeah, also the 9.3 can work as a great cartridge when hunting the big five, buffalo, elephant, hippo, even water buffalo in in Asia, Australia, etc. Now, it's the absolute smallest cartridge I would recommend using on buffalo and elephant, but Like I said, it's definitely going to work just fine when using it when you have an appropriate controlled expansion or solid bullet that is placed properly. 
And, you know, like I keep saying, you have the story of Kevin Robertson and, and his rifle, and then there's many other people that have used it over the years, have killed thousands of buffalo and elephant with the 9.3. Just understand the constraints involved with using the 9.3 in that role and use it within its limitations. So if you wanted a rifle that you were going to hunt dangerous game almost exclusively with, unless you just couldn't handle the recoil of anything more powerful, I would not advise the 9.3. But if you wanted a rifle that you could use to hunt a wide range of game with, to include the occasional thick-skinned dangerous game like Cape Buffalo, I think the 9.3 is a great option for that. And it is an excellent, excellent cartridge for hunting in Africa overall, especially for Plains game. For instance, my cousin Brian has a rifle chambered in 9.3 by 62. He took it to Namibia on a hunt with him uh, many years ago. And uh, I, I think I told the story in another podcast, but his baggage got lost, right? His rifle made it, but his bag with his ammo didn't. No problem. Went to just a regular little gun store out in the middle of nowhere in Namibia. Found some plain Jane 9.3 by 62 millimeter ammo. I think he was using a 286 grain soft point, something like that. Nothing special about it. Went to the range, shot great in his rifle, and he did great on that hunt. He ended up shooting a kudu and a gemsbach and a warthog and all that. Um, and it worked wonderfully. His pH was joking with him at the end of the hunt. He says, Brian, you shoot that 9.3, it's like a laser on the animals. You shoot, boom, you shoot, and then boom, the animal falls over dead just like that. Brian shot that rifle really well, and it performed extremely well on game two. And so he did not hunt dangerous game on that hunt, but if you were in an area where he would have encountered a buffalo and wanted to have a buffalo, combination buffalo plains game hunt, that would have been a perfect rifle to use. Going back to the... Comparing the 9.3 versus the 375, another advantage the 9.3 has over the 375 is you can usually get rifles for a little bit lower price because it will fit in a standard length action. At this instant, as I record this, Sako, Steyr, and Tika all produce rifles in 9.3 by 62. You can also get a current production Mauser rifle in the cartridge. Ruger also produced the Hawkeye African in 9.3 by 62 for a time as well, but they don't do that anymore, right? Ruger kind of uh, rotates the chamberings in some of their rifles. So at various points in the past, you could get those rifles in 9.3. They don't now, but who knows? They might again in the future, and you can also still find those rifles on the used market from time to time. Uh, CZ also used to make rifles in 9.3, specifically the 550. As you've probably heard me lament in previous podcasts, they discontinued the 550 a couple years ago. So you can't get new production rifles from CZ in 9.3 by 62 right now. But once again, there are options on the secondary market. Over the years, I have owned CZ and Ruger rifles chambered in 9.3 by 62, and I really liked both of them. I sold my CZ after a year or two and then bought my Ruger with the proceeds. The only reason I did that was because I'm left-handed. The CZ was right-handed. I wanted a left-handed Ruger. I still have that rifle. Now, interestingly, you can also re-chamber rifles from other standard length cartridges like the 30-06 into 9.3 by 62. You just need a barrel change on it. And actually, that is what I did with my Ruger. They made them uh, from standard from the factory in 9.3 by 62. I don't think they made them in a left-handed version. So what uh, my dad and I ended up doing was we bought left-handed Hawkeye rifles in 30-06, got them rebarreled to 9.3 by 62. So we have left-handed 9.3 rifles right now love them. I've hunted a lot with that rifle. I'll tell you more about it in a second. Now, uh, ammo selection is also pretty good for the 9.3 too. Um, you can get factory ammo right now from Nosler, Hornady, Norma, Federal, Barnes, uh, Seller, Balat, Swift, Privy Partisan, and probably some others, but that's just who I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Uh, you can get it in different bullet weights. We'll talk about that more here in a second, but 285 grain and 286 grain bullets are by far the most popular. So for instance, uh, you can get a loading from Nosler with a 250 grain Acubon at 2,550 feet per second or a 250 grain E-tip at 2,425 feet per second. You can also get a 286 grain A-frame or Woodley Hydro Solid from Federal at 2,360 feet per second. 
uh, from Swift, you can get a 286 grain A-frame or Swift Breakaway Solid. Advertised velocity, 23.99 or 24.19 for those two bullets, respectively. Hornady, they make a factory loading with a 286 grain interlock at 2,360 feet per second. As far as component bullets go, you can get a 286 grain Barnes banded solid, 250 and 286 grain TSX bullets, 250 grain TTSX bullets, 250, 286, and 300 grain A frame bullets, 286 grain breakaway solid bullets. I'm sure there's other options out there as well, but those are some pretty popular and effective bullets that you can get, like I said, uh, custom uh, components for, for some hand loads. Now, I talked a minute ago about how I think that the 9.3 by 62 millimeter cartridge is a perfect choice for someone that wants a good all-around cartridge. If you want one rifle that you can just use a couple different types of ammo for and hunt a very, very large variety of game with all over the world with a pretty reasonably priced rifle with without too much recoil, I think that's where the 9.3 is perfect. Really, you could hunt everything from stuff like javelina and white-tailed deer on one end, all the way up to Cape Buffalo, hippo, and even elephant on the other end of the spectrum with that same rifle. It would be very effective as long as you use the right bullets and you shot it well. So I told you a minute ago that I had that Ruger Hawkeye left-handed chambered a 9.3 by 62. Well, I took it to Zimbabwe several years ago, Cape Buffalo hunting. I also took some other game when I was over there too. I used 286 grain Swift A-frame and Woodley full metal jacket bullets on that Buffalo. It was almost boringly effective on the Buffalo. Uh, I shot it. It was broadside, a little bit over 100 yards away. Didn't know we were there. Shot him uh, right on the left shoulder. He staggered, turned, ran maybe 15 yards. There were some other Buffalo with him. He was in a herd of about four bachelors. The other ones ran away. But he was a little bit confused, didn't know what was going on after I hit him. And I hit him well, right through both lungs. And I took off the top of the heart with it. Almost perfect shot placement. And it hit him hard. And he turned and ran just a little bit and stopped with his tail facing us. I chambered another round, shot him again. My bullet hit right where the spine connected to the pelvis. And he just dropped right there. And that was it for that buffalo. That was a good example of how the 9.3 by 62 got a reputation for being a buffalo slayer. I have no complaints at all about how it performed on that hunt. It was very impressive watching how that buffalo reacted. But like I said, my shot placement was very good and I was using good ammo. I ended up also killing Impala and Zebra with that same rifle using 258 grain RWS H mantle bullets on that same hunt. Results were spectacular there as well. Now, the H mantle is a much softer bullet up front than is the case with the A-frame. So I'm sure people have used it on Buffalo in the past, but it's not really good, not designed or marketed for that. It is a much better bullet for really basically anything smaller than Buffalo. I'd use it on Eland. I'd use it on Moose, whatever. But I shot a Zebra and Impala with it on that particular hunt, and it was also fantastic where it was devastating to the vitals of those animals, but did not cause a tremendous amount of damage to their hides either. Now I mentioned previously some of the shortcomings of the cartridge on a really big tough game, especially as a stopping cartridge. The other big shortcoming of the 9.3 is that it's just not a very flat shooting cartridge, right? You're only getting muzzle velocities 23, 2400 feet per second with those 286 grain bullets. And you can bump that up a little bit with lighter bullets, but we're still not talking 7 rim mag, 300 rim mag, or even 375 H and H velocities. So it's going to be really good at 100 and really out to 200, maybe 250 yards. But that's the end of where I would recommend using that cartridge. But if we're being honest, most people aren't taking many shots at all, especially on dangerous game at ranges past 200 yards anyway. So yes, th this is a downside of the cartridge, but it's not going to be a handicap for most people for the most part. Now, other than those few exceptions, the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser fits the bill nicely for the vast majority of big game hunting situations. To that point, I think I probably killed more game with my 9.3 than I have with any other chambering. My 300 Win Mag comes close though. 
like I said, I use 286 grain Woodley FMJs in that uh, A-frame on my Buffalo. I've shot a couple deer with some assorted 286 grain soft points. I've killed a couple hogs, a couple of other white-tailed deer, impala, zebra, and even a black bear, all with 258 grain H-mantle bullets from RWS. My dad came across those bullets on Gunbroker, I think, many years ago, bought a bunch of them, hand-loaded them for me. They shoot great, and they are just devastating on everything I've ever shot with them. Shots range from maybe 20 yards to just over 100 yards on everything, though. Most were right in that sweet spot for the 9.3. Nothing went far afterwards. Most of those animals dropped in their tracks. Those that did run all went less than 50 yards, usually leaving a very easy-to-follow blood trail. So yeah, I think that displays the strengths of the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser pretty darn well. In short, I think the 9.3 by 62 is a fantastic cartridge that can fill a number of different roles virtually anywhere in the world from a Scandinavian moose hunt to Cape Buffalo in Zimbabwe, especially for a hunter who only wants one rifle to hunt a wide variety of big game. The 9.3 fills that need admirably. John Ponduro Taylor summed up the 9.3 by 62 pretty well when he said in his book, African Rifles and Cartridges, that, I quote, there isn't really a great deal to say about it. Everybody found it so generally satisfactory that there wasn't anything to start a discussion. End of quote. Is the 9.3 a perfect cartridge? No, but I think it is a darn effective one, and it comes about as close as you can reasonably expect to get with a one-size-fits-all solution, especially if you're fitting in a standard-length rifle and with such moderate recoil. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now and hit that like button, right? Just click that red subscribe button below the video and the thumbs up button. Doing both of those will really help me out, and it'll also make sure that you don't miss out on any of my new videos in the future about gear reviews, cartridge profiles and comparisons, and more. Now, for more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they are best suited for, click that link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com and sign up there to get my free ebook I have written on the best hunting cartridges. Now I'm going to turn it over to you. Have you hunted with a 9.3 yourself? If so, what game have you taken with it and what ammo did you use to do that? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Also, feel free to leave a comment with requests for other cartridge profiles and comparisons you would like to see in the future. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.